What's going on guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 83 and uh, today guys we start today's episode off with a game against Norwich here in the Barclays Premier League at home at the Den uh, midway through November and of course so far the key word to describe Millwall's current season has been inconsistency. Yes we've been very inconsistent so far this year yet we still sit in 6th place. It has been a really sort of tight affair at the top and as I mentioned already I generally do believe there could be 3 or 4 teams fighting for that 4th spot come the end of the season you know there's just one uh, sorry two points separating third from seventh uh, so far so it's been a really awesome season as things stand for for the neutral I guess if you will if you're not um, enjoying the series with me managing Millwall hopefully you're enjoying the fact that we are being a little bit inconsistent so far so um, it's good to see the struggle I guess but uh, yeah we do take on Norwich and uh, of course at the Den the Den is always our stadium which we've made a fortress you know like ever since the first season of the championship we've always done really well at the Den you know always done really really well at getting the results but uh, this season we've already lost to Sunderland at home and we've looked very vulnerable in a couple of games and in this game against Norwich as well we looked really really poor and in the 33rd minute it was no real surprise to see Norwich take the lead they did deserve it and it was Leroy Fur who got the goal and of course Norwich was my last career mode side in my last career mode and um, yeah <laughs> Leroy Fur was one of the best players we ever had at Norwich I made him captain and uh, yeah that goal was sickening for me to see that uh, go in there so Fur gets the goal for the newly promoted side Norwich and in the 49th minute here Jerry Rodriguez tries to find Danny Ings but here's how to go straight to Mark Bunn <coughs> And all through the game, really, it was like Manchester United uh, against Fulham last weekend, or, you know, the weekend just gone by. It was cross after cross after cross, and we just didn't really have any other game plan. We almost scored there with Michael Ngu hitting the bar. But in general, the only way I felt like I could actually get chances was by crossing the ball in. I couldn't seem to just pass the ball through. I couldn't shoot from range. I couldn't really do anything in this game. It was only the crosses that seemed to be working for me and as the game was being closed out it was still 1-0 we were looking for that equalising goal here with just a couple of minutes on the clock Kyle Walker crosses this ball in and it almost catches Mark Bunn out of the far post he tips the ball over the bar we have a corner in injury time and Alex McCarthy our goalkeeper storms forward from his own goal into the opposition penalty area Mark Bunn's waving his men back trying to mark the opposition goalkeeper for us so in we go with the corner it's Jay Rodriguez to take it last chance for us to salvage a point it goes towards McCarthy you Chest the ball. It comes to Carrasco who tries to strike it. It's blocked. Norwich boot the ball away. McCarthy's chasing after it. Kelvin then gives the ball away. It comes to Murphy, the Norwich player. He rounds McCarthy. He's got an open goal to shoot at, but he can only put the ball wide. So that would have been amazing if Norwich scored a second goal there, but it did finish. Millwall nil, Norwich won. And again, the key word inconsistency, it just keeps cropping up because we just can't seem to get a good pattern going at the moment. We just win a game, then we lose a game, then we draw a game, then we might win two on the bounce and then lose to on the bounce. We just can't seem to get a good pattern of results going and a loss here at home to Norwich is not good news for us and I was very, very, very frustrated because in that game we didn't even deserve a point. We were that bad. It was like the Sunderland game when we lost at home. We didn't even deserve a single point. But uh, after that we got an international management offer from Uruguay. We stalled it and we are still stalling the Chile offer uh, of course because Chile was the nation we were managing. Um, we got them to the World Cup in Russia 2018 but we're still waiting for the England job. Uh, as per usual it's going to be the exact same thing. If we don't get the England job by the time the Chile deal, uh, the Chile nation, the Chile nation, the Chile job is going to expire, then we'll just take Chile again. But anyway, uh, for the following game, we take on Manchester City here. So a side that could be a top four rival. Of course, we turned down Manchester City in this career mode. You guys chose for us to stay at Millwall. So we turned down City. And City are still having some real problems. So I would not be surprised to see City come back in for us. City are in ninth place. We're in seventh. Uh, they are two points behind us in the league. And they're performing really badly as well. And they haven't really added to their squad as well since last year. They have brought in Thiago. But other than that, their squad is quite similar. And, you know, you look at a couple of positions there you would you think they could have strengthened like the goalkeeper or right back for example but uh, even so we do take on City and uh, the first chance would come in the 18th minute it was for Man City Sinclair came through here and struck it but Alex McCarthy made a really really good save here so desperate to get back into the clean sheet swing of things there uh, makes a very good save and in the 23rd minute Guterres wins the ball Eric Dier finds Junior Melander who finds Liam Trotter superb free ball by our captain Clichy loses out to Kelvin who step overs around Javier Mascherano and it's a wonderful strike by the Brazilian in off 
off the post. No chance for the big goalkeeper Costel Pantilamon. And it's City nil, Millwall 1. So this would be the perfect game to bounce back. You know, a, a loss at home to Norwich was quite embarrassing to be honest considering they, they were a newly promoted side. So coming into this game to get a win would have been really, really good. And uh, well, we made a good start there, didn't we? Kelvin step over and round Mascarano. And City's defence there was just so weak. It really was. And... Um, I wouldn't say it was an easy goal, but um, <clears throat> from Javier Mascarano and Gael Clichy, I'd expect better. But really good strike by Kelvin, and that makes it City nil. Uh, yeah, City nil, Millwall one. So a good start for us here in this game, and Kelvin gets his second goal in the Premier League, I think it is. But a good strike by the Brazilian anyway. And in the 53rd minute, City come forward here. Sami Nasri, the former Arsenal man, finds Neymar. Neymar, the Brazilian, plays it back to Nasri. Real good chance, but McCarthy makes a really, really good save there. So still City nil, Millwall one with 55 minutes on the clock. And in the uh, following minutes, some waiting for the clock to tick by. In the 59th minute, Thiago gets on the ball for Man City here. Uh, the former Barcelona man keeps hold of the ball, keeps on going, chips the ball over the top to Mario Gomez, who gets past Eric Dier. And well, when your luck is out, it really is out. That was just annoying as hell. The ball gets played across the face of goal, and I held down triangle for McCarthy to come and claim it. And instead, Guterres goes towards the ball and pokes it past the goalkeeper. So... That's my mistake, no doubt about it, but it's just so frustrating when that happens and there's nothing you can really do about it. So City won, Millwall won, and an embarrassing own goal by me, uh, scored by our scout future star, Leal Guterres. But in the 66th minute, how about this? Eric Dier with a brilliant challenge, a brilliant ball over the top, and who's there to score it? It's Brian Carrasco, of course it is. The Chilean winger gets to the ball, uh, a lovely free ball as well, it should be said by Eric Dier, and a great finish by Carrasco. So 2-1 here, and uh, of course last year we drew here... Um, we drew uh, one goal each. So coming into this game, I was actually full of, uh, full of confidence we could go one better and get a win. And of course, I was desperate to get a win against the side we, uh, yeah, I should say, you uh, turned down for me. And as things stood, we were doing that. Carrasco with a brilliant finish here. That makes it 2-1 to us here at the Etihad. And um, yeah, fantastic finish by Carrasco after a lovely interception by Eric Dier. What a great signing he's been as well, I should say. £4 million plus Fabricio, a player we picked up on a free agent for this guy. He's already 81 rated. He is just an absolute machine at the back. So great free ball by Dia, great finish by Carrasco City 1, Millwall 2 and as things stood it was been going to be a great result but uh, in the 67th minute here we go on a counter attack Junior Milander flicks the ball onto Carrasco the second goal scorer, he finds Danny Ings Ings back to Carrasco, Carrasco and Ronaldo chops past his man, plays a wonderful free ball to Danny Ings, he's got the legs to beat Pantillamon, he rounds the goalkeeper and puts the ball into the empty net so 69 minutes played City 1, Millwall 3 a fantastic performance here at the Etihad and as I said we needed to bounce back after that humiliate well not humiliating <laughs> let's give let's be a little bit fair uh, embarrassing defeat nonetheless to Norwich at home and we were doing that here brilliant finish by Danny Ings after a great ball by Carrasco that's what I love about Danny Ings you know I mean you know sure you can say pace abuse if you want but when you go one on one I found it really difficult this year to round goalkeepers when you go one on one and um, well what a fantastic finish that was by Danny Ings he gets round the goalkeeper and puts the ball into the empty net so Pantillamon a goalkeeper who we always seem to struggle against was not playing well here and we were free one up at the Etihad as Danny Ings gets his fifth goal in the Barclays Premier League and in the 87th minute here City tried to get themselves an equalising goal Negredo gets on the ball Nasri strikes it great block then Thiago shoots and it's a superb save by McCarthy but how about this Guterres who scored the own goal uh, in this second half to put City level makes up for it with an absolutely incredible block here as Negredo shoots the ball's about to cross the line Guterres slides in and blocks it before it crosses absolutely superb by Guterres <laughs> And in injury time, here as the game was being closed out, we had a free kick. We brought Seb Larson off the bench. Larson's already scored like three free kicks already this season. And he almost got one there, but Pantillamon makes a really good save and keeps the score at 3-1. So the game does finish City 1, Millwall 3. And yes, we do bounce back after that embarrassing defeat to Norwich with a big, big win here away at the Etihad by three goals to one. Uh, our front three, Ings, Carrasco and Kelvin were the goal scorers and the Etihad looks so good on this game, doesn't it? That's the only stadium I've been to to watch a Premier League game, if anyone's interested, which you're probably not. But uh, yeah, I went to watch uh, City play United a few years ago in the Manchester derby. Yep, that's a boring anecdote for you, just to kill some time. But uh, anyway, the uh, following game was against Newcastle United here in the League Cup. And as I've been saying all through the season, I don't care about the League Cup. You know, at first I, I did care. You know, at first I did care because I thought, you know, we could probably try and get ourselves back into the Europa League next year. You know, make it three seasons in the Europa League with another Capital One Cup trophy under our belts. But then I thought, to be honest, we need progression in the series. You know, we don't want to keep winning the same trophies and, you know, doing the exact same stuff. We, we want to win the better trophies, you know, like the FA 
League Cup would be. So, to be honest, we put out a complete backup side once again. I know we've done that for the first two games and we won them both. Uh, Southampton and QPR, we knocked out to reach this stage in the quarterfinals. But to be honest, coming up against Newcastle, I didn't really feel good coming into this game. And the first chance would come in the third minute. Scott Triggs, well, he left his trousers on the team bus. Jesus Christ. I mean, seriously, as you saw, you know, the man that's got no legs, Scott Triggs, he, he found some trousers to cover up that fact, but uh, he left them on the team bus. He was like, he was saying to me in the dressing room, I can't find my trousers, boss. But I said, Mr. Man, you left them on the bus. I ain't going back out to uh, get them for you. It's chilly outside. But uh, yeah, still nil nil here after Bulldog's shot was well saved. But uh, in the 11th minute, how about this for a double save by Nylon? Brilliant stop, uh, or two stops, I should say, by our Scandinavian keeper. Really good goalkeeping, and it's still nil nil here as um, we were looking to get a clean sheet, our first clean sheet in quite a while. So still nil nil as things stood. But in the 26th minute, Newcastle had a corner. Uh, it was crossed into the box by Johan Kabai, and eventually the header was cleared off the line, but uh, John Fleck seemed to lose his footing, and eventually it was put in by the captain, Stephen Taylor. So 25 minutes in, Newcastle had the lead at St. James's Park, and it was Taylor that got the goal there. So that was a real shame as well. Got the ball off the line with Fleck, but then just completely gave the ball away. But uh, from kickoff, Stanislav gives the ball away. It comes to Bordock. He finds the man with no legs, Scott Triggs. He finds Seb Larson. Larson fake shots round his man, gets past him, hurdles the challenge, keeps on going. He's not a quick player, Larson, but I tell you what, he's got a superb right foot on him. He's got some great shot power, some serious accuracy, and what a goal that is by Seb Larson. He has had a superb start to the season. You know, he's lost his place to Junior Melander. He's decreasing in stats as he's getting on now. He's 31 years old. But he has still played superbly well. And what a goal that was to make it Newcastle 1, Millwall 1. So just minutes after conceding, we were back on level terms. But we scored a kickoff goal here, a goal straight from kickoff. And Newcastle had a chance to do the same as Gabriel Obertown went down the right-hand side, beat the former Newcastle man Shane Ferguson, crossed the ball in, and it was headed in in the centre by Walter, past Nyland to make it. Newcastle to Millwall 1 so 29 minutes in and the Magpies were back in front here and in the 45th minute we get the ball away with Triggs he finds Stanislas, Stanislas finds Sam Baldock, chips the ball over the top towards Ermakov here, the free agent Russian is all alone, what a chance for him, tries to round his man, finds Sam Baldock and Baldock fires it wide and I really should have finished that on the stroke of half time but I completely messed it up <clears throat> That would have saw us level at the break, but instead I messed up the chance, and it was still Newcastle 2, Millwall 1. And in the 53rd minute here, uh, Jonas Gutierrez crossed the ball in towards Jackson Martinez, and his header hit the inside of the post and went past Nyland into the back of the net. So Newcastle 3, Millwall 1 here. Whenever we take on Newcastle, it's always a high-scoring game, and it was 3-1 here. And in the 57th minute, Gabriel Obertan comes forward here. We're jockeying him, but he holds the ball up. Eventually, he plays the ball through to Jackson Martinez, and he doubles his tally for the night. Newcastle 4, Millwall Millwall won, and as things stood, it was going to be an embarrassing defeat for us. So, like I said, inconsistency is the key word. You know, an embarrassing defeat to Norwich at uh, home in the league by a goal to nil. Then we've uh, beat City by three goals to one uh, at the Etihad Stadium. And then we come into this game, and we're 5 1 down to Newcastle in the Capital One Cup. Yes, with a backup side, but even so, it's embarrassing, really. And the last chance came in the 69th minute. A great chance at the far post was well saved by a Kivracking girl for Newcastle, I think it is. And uh, from the other corner here, it's crossed into the box. Eventually, Stephen. Taylor gets the ball away. It comes to the man with no legs. Triggs, he strikes it, but he can only put the ball wide. And the game does finish Newcastle 5, Millwall 1. So, like I said, inconsistency is the key word of the season. And we lose yet again. And we are out of the Capital One Cup. But as I said, I'm not really too fussed, to be honest. I'm just a bit more disappointed in the scoreline than the actual fact that we have gone out of the tournament. But uh, as always, guys, a big thank you for watching today's video. I really hope you have enjoyed it. If you have, please leave a like. That's much appreciated. And it really does help my channel out. And I'll see you for the next episode of Career Mode very soon. Thank you.